do it. Uh, so you can tweet in. People have been tweeting their questions like crazy. Hashtag Ask Heartland. We have people with mics on the side in the aisles here. So they're going to be running. Put your hands up. I'm going to stop very frequently for your questions. We're all just going to have a big chat with the cast. Are they ready? They're here. Great. Are you guys ready to come up and talk about this, uh, this awesome season finale episode? I'm ready. Okay, let's give them a big round of applause. Amber Marshall, why don't you come up here? Come on up. Yeah, it's time. It's time to chat. Graham Wardle, you're right behind her. Alicia, Alicia Newton, come on up. Yeah, everyone's coming up, guys. You got to get out of your seats. Michelle Morgan, Sean Johnston. Chris Potter. Yeah, right here. I'm going to take this one, and then you can go right after as you please. Congratulations, guys. All right. You want to take that one? Great. I'm going to go along this side. No, so, Sean, I have to tell you, there was a lot of tweeting. Is it always like this? There was a lot of tweeting from women about you during this episode. <laughs> yeah, for real. There was a, one woman asked, how much are you like your character? And then said, I think I love him. Check the hashtag, ask Heartland. It's right there, like 23 minutes ago. Well, I think a lot of people refer to Tim as Jack in the Twitter thing. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Chris. I have some uh, interesting questions for you as well. So let's... Uh... <laughs> Not so fast. Do you hear that? Someone just said that was awesome, guys. Congratulations, everyone. Maybe the first thing uh, you guys can tell us is how is it different to shoot a wedding episode after spending eight seasons together? Uh, you seem, you know, you come off as such a family on television and when we see you in real life. What, what, what is it like to make a wedding episode together? I think Amber should answer that. <laughs> Hello. Testing? Um, this was, ugh, I really, really enjoyed this episode, I have to say. That ending was awesome. <laughs> Um, I was sitting there and I was just like, oh, we did this? This is great. Um, I, I don't know. I think that this has been so rewarding for not only all of you to see the eight years of all of our development and our character development, but to have this kind of perfectly wrapped up present given to us all, I think has been, has been really a quite emotional journey too. And I found that this episode was very unique for me to film because it was different than anything I've ever done. And I really, really enjoyed the final product. Really quickly, because everyone uh, had some great emotional scenes in this, some fun, some love stuff, right? You finally got the I love you. She kept you hanging. <laughs> Has that ever happened to anyone in real life? You give the I love you and then nothing? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Alicia, what was your favorite part of the episode? That was the number one question so far on social media, by the way. Um, what was your favorite part of this episode? That's what everyone was asking for all of you. The ending. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed the ending. It was really fun to film. And um, I'm a big fan of uh, Liberty and that kind of thing. And um, a lot of that scene, um, Liberty like horsemanship was involved. So I really enjoyed filming it and yeah, it, it looked really cool. It looked <laughs> amazing. I you was so proud job. of you. Thank you. I, uh, that's the first Heartland episode I've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> um, Only once. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, watching uh, Michelle get married in uh, season uh, and uh, that was a beautiful moment uh, for me. And uh, seeing uh, Amy get married in this episode, was 
as equally emotional for me as a viewer as it was as Jack uh, being a part of the wedding. Sean was uh, crying. I was sitting beside him. He was crying through most of the episode. Was not. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> uh, so I, I think of Michelle and Amber as uh, the daughter maybe that I never had uh, in my own life. And I love having, <laughs> I love having spent all this, this time with, with them and getting to know them intimately like we do, like actors are needing to do uh, in a program like this. And uh, so watching Michelle and Amber get married, I think, uh, as their characters. Uh, and in real life. And in real life, yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the, the Heartland marriage uh, really, for me, solidifies the reason that we make the show. And uh, it's to uh, bond families and it's to, uh, to treat uh, each other with respect and with love and commitment. And I think that we've done a pretty good job of that. And I want to thank these two girls for uh, being my daughters. Chris, what was your favorite part? Yeah. Well, first of all, I guess I've been doing this a long time. Sean has too. And one way or another, we've all been performers, but I got to say, it, it makes you feel pretty special to be up here being asked questions by people who really are responsible for putting us up here. And somebody that we should really thank is Heather Conkey. And when you ask the question about... Well, there are more people than that, but I can say that when you ask the question about wedding, you know, we all weren't, well, we weren't all involved in planning Amber's wedding. Amber was involved. <laughs> Sean might have been, I don't know, but, <laughs> but we were all a part of Amber's wedding. And in, in a small way, we were all part of, of uh, Heather's daughter's wedding. And the, I think the magic combination of Dean Bennett's direction and Amber and uh, Heather having gone through this r really gave a ton of value to that last episode. Um, it was so intertwined with what was happening in the lives of our cast members and so on. So that was a real benefit. So Heather, we, we really want to thank her. She's always lying in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she should, she should stand, here, up. stand up. Stand up. Everyone. You can't see the her Heartland if you're watching show the live runner. stream. For those of you who don't know, yeah. Heather Conkey is the Heartland showrunner, and she is responsible for the vision of the show and a lot of the writing. Yeah, and Dean Bennett, uh, who did just an exceptional job and is always saddled with that last, well, I will call it the Heather episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that require, and we're, and we're always battling the light at that time of year, unpredictable weather, hours, children's hours, animals. Animals are very patient, but anyway. Uh, so it's a combination of things. Jamie um, Paul Rock came aboard as a producer on this show. Uh, a C, a C, it, 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 the show has really picked up with Jamie. I really, uh, we, we owe a lot to his, his work. And of course, uh, our producers, Jordy and Tom, and, of course, the guy that brought the whole thing to CBC, the mastermind, <laughs> Michael Weinberg. They're all here tonight. So that's all I have to say. But I'd like to thank all of them and all of the, the cast. We feel very lucky. So something that would be great for uh, them to answer. And you know what? We're going to take questions from the audience in just a second. So if you can start putting your hands up. Someone will be ready to take you next. I know Mackenzie Maxton came to me earlier today, so she definitely wants to get a question in. Um, what's going to happen in season nine now? That was another big question. Can I know I? that uh, the executive production team you just mentioned will probably have the best idea of that, but Michelle, you seem to have an inkling. Oh, we don't know what's going to happen next season. <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> but what would you like to see? Well, and that can, I can also answer the first question then, because my favorite part of this episode to watch was that last scene with you, Alicia, that was gorgeous and I cried. But to film, my favorite parts were the, was that last scene with me and Gabe when we were talking about our wedding because um, I think that that's a beautiful marriage between Lou and Peter and 
I like that little bit of hope there at the end. So Who wants to we'll see, see what Peter happens next together. season. <laughs> you never know, but we, we don't know. We should ask Heather what's going to happen <laughs> next season. Michelle, I have a funny question for you from social media. It's from Aaron Loves HL, Heartland. Michelle, are you a control freak like Lou sometimes? <laughs> we should ask my parents that. They're up there. <laughs> um, uh, no. I'm... <laughs> sometimes? Classic answer of a person with that problem. <laughs> I'm not as organized as her, that's for sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Graham, what was your favorite part of this episode? The blue suit that uh, uh, Carrie James and I had a lot of fun shooting that scene. Um, was he, he not awesome that. in that scene, Carrie yeah. James? I, I laughed a lot. <laughs> yeah. I wish he wore that suit. Wouldn't that be awesome if he actually wore that suit? Like, we couldn't find the other one, and then I had to get his, and he wore the blue one. Without the shirt, right, girls? <laughs> Carrie's gotten funnier and funnier. Yeah. Uh, that was my favorite part. Great. And Amber, we left you for last. Um, I definitely love that last scene. That capped everything for me. I thought it was so beautiful. And on that day, I actually, I don't know how much you guys know about the process, but I didn't actually see Alicia do any of that stuff. I was staring at a stick out in a field. <laughs> and uh, being told what was happening. And so when I got to see it come together, I was like, Oh, yes, that is Heartland. Yeah, I'm really into this new horse, Trouble. Are you guys into this horse? Yeah, yeah. yeah very, such a good actor. Can you tell us, who can tell us a little bit about how good the horses are as actors to work with and what it's like? Is that me? Yeah, go for <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I think most of you know I have a very special appreciation for the equine actors on the show. And I've really, I've spent a lot of time with them over the last eight years because the horse who plays Spartan, Stormy, we've had the same horse for eight years. And so you get to know them and you get to know all of their little characters and quirks and you know, uh, you know what, we can't film this scene too long because he becomes a diva after 10 o'clock and he just needs to go home. And you start to learn these things and it's actually true. There's certain horses that will work all day fine, Stormy. Mm -mm. You know, he's awesome for like five hours, and then he's like, no, <laughs> no more of this. Um, so I think I'm going to turn this one to Alicia for trouble, because you worked with him a little bit more than I did. And did you find any special connection with him, or...? Yeah, um, I, I really love Trouble especially because he looks a lot like uh, my lease horse. And, uh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you must follow her on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed working with them. They had, I think, probably about three different horses that played um, him. I especially enjoyed working with the, the horse that did all the Liberty work. And Remington? Yes, he was so amazing, and, yeah, I'm a really huge fan of that kind of thing, so, yeah. So with that, what she means by that is the Liberty work is stuff like when you saw him in the stall and he was pawing, stamping, rearing, any of that agitation, that's actually cues that are trained. So just like you would train a dog to sit or stay or whatever, there's a trainer in that stall with him telling him to do those things. So there's a trainer saying, okay, paw, 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 and they have a cue for it, and that horse will stamp and all those kinds of things. And if he's going to run at her, that was also Remington, right? And he's taught to run when he's called. So these things for these horses that look like they're troubled horses, <laughs> don't mind the pun, they're... <laughs> They have been taught all of these specific cues, and so they're not actually dangerous. We would never have a horse on set that actually is going to trample Georgie. Um, we just have these horses that are so well-trained that they know when they're given that cue that they'll perform. That is all a lie. Heartland is real. <laughs> Chris has another perspective. Did you know that Chris directed a bunch of episodes of Heartland? How many did you say in total? He said 14, but he's not using his microphone. 12 or 14. <laughs> so you have a different perspective on the horses? Well, I, I would just say from that perspective, I think uh, from the directing part, the incredible thing about animals is that they're actually not trouble at all. They're the most patient performers on our set. They all Thank have you. different personalities. <laughs> they, have a, they are individuals, and they have, they have their own temperament. But what we really owe most of... That, too, is our wranglers. We have a wrangler team, as Amber mentioned, that 
uh, is responsible for all of those behaviors that you see. And it is only actually human error or lack of planning that can cause a delay in an animal scene. Because the animals are always pretty game. So as long as we do our work and we have those pros looking after the, the, the particular scene, they're very cooperative. And as Amber was saying, we don't have dangerous animals on set. We just have dangerous people. <laughs> but, Can but, we get a uh, question from the audience? Are you guys ready? Anyone ready to go? Yeah. So you guys with the mics, why don't you pick someone? <laughs> Great. Hi. Um, Alicia, I heard it's a boy that plays your stump double in the jump scenes. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Um, it's Sawyer Erickson, who is um, Tom Erickson's son, who is our stunt coordinator, who does um, a lot of the stunts on Heartland. Now, all of the trick riding that you would see, um, that's all done by um, a girl named Mackenzie, and she's amazing. She is, like, so strong. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, and then we also have Sawyer, um, who's been doing a lot of the jumping scenes. Um, you know, anything that's not trick riding, <laughs> um, a lot of that you see with him. And uh, I got to do um, a scene this season that I was able to actually do some jumping, which is exciting, because um, I jump and that kind of thing. So they finally let me do a stunt on my own. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's Sawyer who does a lot of the work, and yeah, he's pretty amazing. Hey, Graham, we talked about um, Amber's audition earlier. Can you tell us about the first scene you guys ever did together? <laughs> Someone else remembers what What was the don't. first scene we did together? <laughs> what, what was it? <laughs> Oh, oh, like in the show, like chronologically. There's okay. a difference between the first scene that you see on yeah. TV and the first scene that we ever do. Because we don't shoot in order. So we'll go by location. But sorry, if you're this talking question about was for Graham. Scene. I'm taking over again. S sorry? I'm talking <laughs> about the, the first scene? time you were ever on camera together. I have no idea. But you know what? I'll tell you the story about that scene. Um... That, you know, that was crazy. Uh, my character smoked, and he was all and wore a choker? And uh, yeah, I wore this necklace that we called the choker. Uh, <laughs> my hair was parted in the middle, and they called it the barn doors. This was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, Amber was riding around on the horse, and, and I was like, what are you doing? And you're crazy. And... Um, She's like, you're crazy, you're smoking. Um, <laughs> That's about all I remember. <laughs> but when we first shot the pilot, when we were filming the pilot, uh, we had a blackout. It, it was a terrible, cold winter night, and we'd all been shooting all day, and then we lost power, and we were all sitting around the table. Yeah, in the house, and we were just like, we lost power, now what? <laughs> How long did that last, like 20 minutes maybe? I can't remember. Longer than that. It was crazy. <laughs> this is a question. I want uh, people to raise their hands again and let's get someone ready to go. And so guys, bring them a mic. And in the meantime, I'll fill in with something from social media. So Michel de Marchand wants to know, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you first started acting? So maybe that's a good question for Alicia. You're the newest member of the cast. Um, I definitely wish I knew, oh, I don't know, <laughs> um, that there's a lot of waiting on set. It's hurry up, get into wardrobe, get into makeup, and then you just have to sit there and wait for like half the day. <laughs> okay, do we have a question from the audience? Chris. Um, so I know Michelle, you wore your actual wedding dress and hair that you did in real life and you wore it in the episode where you got married to Peter. Amber, was I just seeing things or were you wearing your real I wedding knew, dress? I knew this question was going to come up. <laughs> yes, that was the dress that I wore at my wedding. 
So we did it in opposite order. Yes. Because I got married on television first, and then I got married in real life uh, like a year or two later. And, and they graciously had given me this beautiful wedding dress that fit me so perfectly. So of course, I wore it to my wedding. <laughs> And that then, Amy did it. To, on the other it. hand, I had gotten married a year and a half before my character, and so it was like, well, I've got this dress that fits and looks good, I might as well wear it. <laughs> and it looked good on a horse, right? Didn't it look beautiful? I want another question from the audience ready to go, but first I'm going to ask Graham Madeline 4554's question. What's your inspiration for your poems and photography? Also, in all caps, we love you. Is it I Madeline? guess I'm supposed to say, we love you, oh. all caps. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you, Madeline. Uh, inspiration. Um, sometimes you see things and it makes you stop. And you take a moment and you look at it. And you're like, what is that? And you just have, to, you don't have a name for it. And those are the moments, those are the pictures that I try and capture. Because it's something that I don't know how to wrap words around or I don't know how to describe it, but I feel something. So I try my very best to put that into words and to capture that on camera. Great. So thank you. That's lovely. Do we have another question from the audience? There you are. I see you up there. Uh, the the Lou's baby, Katie, how many kids did they use for that part or was it the same baby throughout the seasons? Uh, six or seven kids? Whoa. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, at first, it was two. There were twins that played, because I'm sure you noticed that the, it's a different actor now. Um, at first, it was twins until last season. And it, oh, is this their first season, Julia? Yeah. yeah. So they felt like it was time to grow Katie up a bit so she could say more lines. So they've hired this... Um, wonderful child actor named Julia, who's, I think, doing a fantastic job. And it's just one kid. Um, so it's hard for her sometimes. She does a great job, but sometimes she gets tired, and there's no one else to, to play her part. And I'm going to, because you guys are here, I can give you a little sneak into behind the scenes. Did you notice that that wasn't her dancing with me and Peter on the dance floor? No. We had gone past her hours that she can work as a minor, so they had to bring in another little girl and just not show her face. So I'm glad you couldn't notice. <laughs> that means that they did, we did a good job filming around it. All right, let's get another person ready to go. Uh, meanwhile, I like this question. This is from Ali Visser 0811 because I was thinking the same thing. When you were watching this episode, how did you feel and what were you thinking? Because you don't usually get to see the show with all of these people, right? And all together. So what was tonight like? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it's really funny. I was sitting beside Graham and Sean, and I think we all felt that it was really, really cool to have instant feedback. Because yeah. typically, when you're watching the show, there's no, like, laugh track. So you're not like, oh, ha, ha they got it. Yeah. It's, it's like when, when you guys, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you. When you guys laughed, we were like, oh, that, that came across awesome. And then you guys would be like, oh, and we're like, oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> so um, thank you for being our own personal live audience because it was really cool to see what works and what doesn't and what really resonates with people because, you know, we, we do this and, and we think that it's awesome. But when we get to see it in your, through your eyes, it's even better. You were going to say the same thing, Chris? Did you have something to add? Just, wow, Gabe's head is big. <laughs> and I also was thinking, wow, you look old, Chris. That's Not a strange true. phenomenon of being in a business a long time, is you get to watch yourself age. You know, you actually do. And when it's, when it's on film, it's, it's challenging at Chris, times. you look you very handsome, didn't you guys think? Thank you. Look you. Very you know, handsome. <laughs> That technique often works when I'm trying to fish a compliment out of my <laughs> cast members. Do we have another question ready to go up there? There we go. Do you guys have anything in common with your character on the show? <laughs> Horses. I ride motorcycles now, and I didn't before. So now we have that in common. 
You're very into motorcycles. Yeah, I yeah. am. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I picked that up. I learned on the show, and then I was like, this is awesome. I should do this. And so then Graham learned, and then I was like, this is awesome. I should do this. <laughs> You know, people always, sorry, I just want to quickly answer because um, people always ask, like I was joking before about the control freak thing, but um, <laughs> I, I'm like Lou in the sense that I, we both have, we're both mothers and we both love our family. We're very close with our family. My family's here. I love you guys. Um, but I'm, I want you guys to know, if you don't know, if you don't follow me on Instagram or something, I am actually pretty different from Lou. One of my biggest passions is yoga and I really like surfing. And me and my husband like to sit around on the beach with our kids, and I think Lou would go crazy with all the sand, and it would be too dirty. <laughs> and, um, and my house isn't quite as well organized as her. But I, I get inspiration from Lou, but I'm not really that much like her. I'm a little more laid back, I like to think. <laughs> Sean? Sean, yes, and I, this, it's Kathy Olgerson, I found it. She's the one that said, is Sean at all similar to his character? I think I love him with a winky face. Uh, I don't know. You know, that probably, uh, from my point of view, or from uh, if that is a question about me, I would probably be the least likely to answer that, or the shouldn't answer that. Maybe everybody else should answer that, because I think Jack is an incredibly honorable uh, man. He's a man's man, he's a poet, he's all the things that uh, I wish I could be in my life. Uh, he's all the things that I wish for everyone here, and I wish that everyone here could have uh, a, a, a Jack in their lives. And uh, <laughs> So if I was to say, yes, I am awesome like Jack, uh, that would sound kind of self-serving. So I'd I'll let somebody else say, yes, he's exactly like Jack. There was totally a question that I just put in for the fun of it from Heartland is the best. The question was, why are you all awesome? So there, there well, you go. Well, I never go. got to answer the question because... Tim's, uh, there's nothing much about Tim I like, and yet, I have a feeling I might be a lot like Tim. <laughs> the only difference is, is that I have a home to go back to, and someone who's still convinced that I have potential. <laughs> but frankly, care. I've told people this before about Heartland, for, for, for me, and I don't know how we all get into character, because other people are on set a lot more than some of, the, some of us. But uh, I wear a pair of cowboy boots on Heartland that I never wear in Ontario. And I leave them in my place. And when I get off the plane, I put those boots on. And all of a sudden, I get really snarky. <laughs> and that helps me stay in that character. The problem is, is I tend to main, sort of maintain it. <laughs> but, anyway, it's an interesting question. Yeah, let's continue. Because Amber. some people become the characters, in a way, or treated like they're characters on set by the crew, because they don't actually know the real person all necessarily. Are you confessing that that happens to you and Nobody hurts likes your feelings? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you guys Come love Chris, me. right? Come on, I mean once again, the Gone fishing works. again, right? It works every time. Amber, you didn't just have your wedding dress, but of course Amy wore cowboy boots. Like, would it be possible when we heard practice in the shoes, we thought, yeah, right. There's no yeah. way. How else are you like your character? Um, I think I'm actually very similar to my character in a lot of ways. I live a country lifestyle. I have horses. I, um, I think that for me... Um, Amy's lived a little bit more of a sheltered life, I want to say, and it, it branched out a little bit when she went to Europe, kind of found out who she really was, and I think that was so important for her, and I know a lot of you were very angry at her, <laughs> but I think that that was the journey she needed to lead to find out who she really wanted to be, and for me, I grew up in Ontario, and I moved out to Alberta for Heartland, and I've stayed there ever since. And it's been such a life-changing experience for me because I don't know if I ever would have been brought out there otherwise. And it's exactly where I want to be, and I can't imagine myself anywhere else. So for me, I think that that was sort of 
my way of relating to Amy's travel to Europe because Europe wasn't where she wanted to be, but she realized who she was. And for me, I realized who I was when I moved to Alberta. That's lovely. I want to have, uh, I want to try to get at least two more audience questions in, but first, Georgia, I'd like you to answer. Sorry, Alicia, huh. how much are you like Georgie? Um, I'm actually, well, I'm, I'm a little bit like Georgie. We both love animals, and we both love horses, and we both ride. Um, but definitely the main difference is I don't dress like Georgie, and I don't like the way she dresses either. What do you mean? Um, uh, but yeah, we both have very similar personalities, so yeah. You're not as much of a tomboy. No. <laughs> do we have a question from the audience? Do you have a microphone? Let's do it. What was your favorite episode to shoot in season eight? <laughs> it's hard to remember any other episodes except for this one right now. <laughs> it's funny because when we film, we film over seven months and everything just feels like one giant episode to us. Like it's, it's not, because you guys have a break each week and you get to go away, think of other things. We are filming continuously. So it's not really, and we're filming out of order. We're not filming start to finish each episode. We film two episodes together and all mashed around. So it's really hard to remember, like I remember moments. I don't necessarily remember episodes. And that's why when you guys always ask me questions like, oh, what was your favorite episode and what was this? I'm like, I don't even remember the episodes. I just remember what we shot and where and the moments that happened and the interactions with the cast and crew, not necessarily the episode. Does that make sense? My favorite episodes are usually sitting on a horse early in the morning, often with him, <laughs> drinking a coffee before the cameras roll and looking at the mountains and the sun coming up and thinking, I could have picked another line of work. Thank goodness I didn't. <laughs> this is magical. My least favorite episode uh, sh shots are, for me personally, dining room scenes. <laughs> We often shoot them before lunch. We start early in the morning. Roast beef is on the table or chili or stew. Some of these people can eat. Like, I... I you eat. You I always eat. I never eat. No. Oh, we no. see you eat. Uh, only when I'm on camera. <laughs> so you have to eat a lot before we even have lunch. And it's often early in the morning. We've eaten some heavy meals at 9, 10 a.m. So, yeah, eating and beef because we have to shoot no all around that table and all the angles, we repeat those scenes over and over and we have to keep them fresh. So they're, they're very uh, unfun for me, but sort of <laughs> monotonous. But those scenes but, are also we do fun have a sometimes because we laugh a lot, yeah. We do laugh. Yeah, the, the dining room scenes are, are the uh, opportunity for just about the entire, like us, to be together all at one time, and, and uh, sure. while we're shooting the rest of the episode, we're kind of fractured. It'll be uh, Michelle and uh, Hogan, or it'll be Amber and Graham, or it'll be Chris and I, or uh, Chris and somebody else. But to get, to, <laughs> to get all of us together, uh, that's our opportunity to get all of us together for an extended period of time, because it takes several hours to shoot some of those dinner scenes. They're uh, long on the page, and, uh, and there's a, a lot of characters, so uh, it's a complicated setup. Uh, and like Michelle says, it is a hoot sometimes. You get everybody together, and I don't know Sean if always you know, gets so giddy. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but these are some of the funniest people on the planet. This one... This one. He's always showing funny YouTube videos, always, or showing us a new app. Yeah, yeah so it, it's, it's, it's a, a, I love them. Uh, but they do and, take a long time. Yeah, they do take a long time. And, and, and again, we agree to disagree. <laughs> hey, Sean, do you remember the scene where uh, Michelle had to pop the cork off the champagne? It was like season three, I two? Can't. Long time. Do you yeah, remember two? when I popped Was it the champagne? You guys would know better than us. Yeah, well, Michelle popped the cork off, and it flew, like, across the room and hit the sound guy that was holding the microphone <laughs> right in the butt <laughs> while we're filming this scene, and the champagne just explodes over her hand. Yeah, we laughed a long time about that. you had to keep that. holding the boom yeah. and, like, recording <laughs> her sound. We laughed a lot about that. 
We have to wrap up in just a couple of minutes, and I've got to get ready to give you guys, don't say, oh, I got some prizes coming, some really amazing prizes. Uh, so as I get that ready, a lot of people ask. Could I on? just throw, throw this in? Um, you know, we were talking about favorite episodes to shoot. I'll tell you what is the hardest episode to shoot, and that's every year. It's the last episode of our shooting schedule because those are usually some of the most powerfully emotional stories that we tell, and, uh, and it is hard to say goodbye even for a short period of time to all the Because we don't know here. if we're coming back either. You know, uh, you know it's, a, it's, it's, such a, it, it's such a commitment to, uh, to, to be there for as long as we are, and, and uh, we even want to stay longer. I just hate our last day of filming. I hate our last episode. Even though I love them, uh, I hate them. Sean loves being Jack. He doesn't like his days off. Sean doesn't go home after, after work. He's We're always like, Sean, what are you doing here? It's your day off. He's like, I'm <laughs> just hanging out. Oh, we have, we have one more question. Great. Let's do it. Um, why is Lou and Peter divorcing? I think there's probably some people here who've had their parents divorce. And there's probably lots and lots of people in Canada who've had their parents split up. So there's probably lots of kids who know what that's like. So maybe it would be nice for them to see a story like that on TV that can help them deal with what they're going through. I've been looking for you. Okay, you want to come up and do this with me right here? We met in the atrium today, and she was like, I'm asking a question no matter what. Wait. <laughs> I just want to say, Alicia, Amber, and Michelle, you're very gorgeous, and you and Sean and Chris and Rem, you're very handsome. Um, you're gorgeous, too. I just want to say, what was the funniest thing that ever happened in uh, season eight while you were filming? And Alicia, I'm really glad they told me. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Uh, funniest thing. Funniest thing ever happened to me. Uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> we laugh a lot, but it's mostly at stupid jokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, wasn't, that wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, Julia um, who plays Katie, uh, like as Michelle was saying, she gets really tired and seen sometimes, so she was really emotional that day <laughs> when we were shooting. So she was bossing everybody around. <laughs> it was really scary. <laughs> it was funny in retrospect, but it's not. It wasn't funny then. She kept saying things like, "I'm out of here." <laughs> I kept trying to cheer her up, but the more we would try, she'd just say, Don't touch me! I'm out of here! <laughs> I just need my 10-minute break, and then I'll come back! <laughs> that was the only time she got like that. Yeah. All right, before we wrap up here, we have something really cool to give away. Do you know what this is? This is the script for the wedding episode, signed by everyone here. That's pretty cool, right? Who's going to do the honors of drawing one of the raffle tickets? Someone from, does someone here want to do it? You want to do it again? Get up here, Mackenzie. Here we go. Don't look. <laughs> We've got two. We're gonna, I'm going to take the top one. All right. Do you want to say it with me? Or here you go. Seven nine five nine one five. Do we have a winner? We have a winner. Congratulations. There's a t-shirt in there, there's posters, and we've got a bunch of other stuff to give away. But first we're gonna let 
the cast say goodbye. Aww. They've got to go. Oh. What? Really? <laughs> but guys, season nine. Are we excited? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys so much. Some of you came from really far away. Thank you so much for your support, for being here, and for watching the show. We all appreciate it a lot. And we had a lot of fun today. I really enjoyed myself, so thanks for all of this and for allowing us to continue doing what we love. I'm proud that we have a show that is in uncharted territory in this country, other than the Beachcombers, which ran for 170 million years. <laughs> We're going into our ninth season, and we as Canadians should all be proud that we have a one-hour drama that is run, has run that long and has this much support and growing support. I mean, we, we as Canadians should be proud that we have a great product like this that people are trying to watch in the U.S. and can't get as quickly as you. They could get it, but I, we, I don't know how. But we should all be proud as a group, and it's because of the collective here. So... Keep watching and tell your friends, and we'll keep doing it. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you in season nine. Happy wedding episode, and thank you so much for coming here today to hang out with all of us. Thank you. Let's give them a big round of applause again. Thank you. You guys can stay seated. We're going to do more prizes. She won the script. You won the script?